After battering Spurs on Monday, Chelsea returned to Premier League action this weekend, playing top of the table and current Premier League champions Manchester City at home at Stamford Bridge. But who will play and how do Chelsea win? Let's get to it. Lads, lasses and the rest of the masses, welcome back to the channel. I'm Mono from Mono CFC and welcome to the lead-in. Like always, I'm going to be predicting the lineups that I feel will play and show how I believe our team could set up tactically. So, without further ado, let's firstly look at our opponents for this match. City are currently sitting, like I just mentioned, right at the top of the Premier League table. Nine wins, two losses and zero draws see them above all other teams going into this game. City are always a dangerous prospect, but off the back of a 6-1 thrashing of Bournemouth and success in Europe in midweek, they'll no doubt have their tails up for this one. If we look at the head-to-head, -head, City have dominated Chelsea in recent history, winning every single game since we beat them in the Champions League final back in 2021. This will no doubt be a tough test, and City will be looking to continue this dominance on Sunday. So, how will they plan on trying to achieve that? Let's look at the team. Man City, managed by the mastermind Spaniard Pep Guardiola, can set up in a number of different ways, but for the most part they love to utilise a 4-1-4-1 which changes into a 3-2-4-1 during the game. Just for clarity's sake, I'll be putting them into a 3 at the back formation. First up in goal, obviously, is Edison, consistently one of the best goalkeepers in the league with his hands and with his feet. The Brazilian will no doubt start for this game. For the back three, this will be altered from their usual lineup because they have a number of different injuries to defensive players. The two right-sided centre-backs are where we'll see one change, with Ruben Dias retaining his place alongside Croatian Josko Gvardiol. Josko usually operates on the left-hand side of the defence, but due to Stones and Akanji both being doubts of this one, I'd imagine he'd play in the centre, whilst ex-Chelsea man Nathan Ake plays on the left of the three. Moving into the midfield, we'll start with the two sixes, which will be slightly tricky to pick. The obvious inclusion is, as ever, the Spaniard Rodri. John Stones usually operates in this midfield, so with him out, there's a vacancy that I believe will be filled by another ex-Chelsea man in Mateo Kovacic. Moving further up into the attacking midfield roles, we'll start on the right-hand side, where the ever-reliable and ever-pacey Kyle Walker will start in this hybrid right-back slash right-mid role. In the central areas will be Julian Alvarez, who will occupy the right of this two, and the Portuguese Bernardo Silva will play off of the left. Completing this four will be Belgian Jeremy Doku, who will have to prove himself against the Reese James test if he wants to be considered one of the best wingers in the league. For the final man, down the centre is the freakish Norwegian cyborg that is Erling Braut Haaland to lead the line. Now, as I've said and will keep saying, I'm going to be moving away from the tactical side of things in these previews and stick to putting that in my tactical breakdowns after games, so I'm not going to talk at length about City here, but I will point out a few things of note about them. Let's be straight up, City are the best team in the league by a mile. They are without arguably their best ever player in Kevin De Bruyne and are still cakewalking the league at the moment. They have the most wins, most goals, most possession, most passes, there's genuinely zero point trying to look at what they do well and what they don't, because to be honest, they're good at literally everything. However, they have not been flawless this season. They have lost twice in the league and once in the cup. So what I'm going to spend this section talking about is what we can learn and use from those losses. They lost three games, once to Arsenal 1-0, once to Wolves of all teams 2-1, and finally were dumped out of the cup by Newcastle 1-0. Though all of those teams were lucky, to say the least, to win those games, one thing was abundantly clear. The left-hand side of City's defence is their one weak point, and breaking down that right-hand side has proven fruitful for teams in the past. Because they leave so many players forward and that their left wingers, Doku or Grealish, are both not very defensively minded, they are definitely weaker on that side and have to rely on Ake being flawless, like he so often is mind, in order to keep defensive solidity there. The other side, with Kyle Walker's recovery pace, is basically impossible to get through, especially with Ruben Dias on that side too. The only other thing I can point out about City is the fact that they've gotten a few red cards so far this season, and got away with Kovacic not being given one in the Arsenal game in truth. We saw from Rodri's one that this City team can be rattled, and we are certainly capable of rattling teams like we did to Spurs last time out. Edison was also one that could have been sent off in that game, and Pep got a yellow too. Not only that, but part of the reason why City are so defensively astute is because they know when to commit tactical fouls, and with how tricky some of our players are, I could foresee a City player getting two yellows here like Akanji did against Brighton. 
as you can tell, there's not much to take away in terms of city weaknesses, so I'm scraping the barrel here, because they don't have many, if any. So instead, I'd like to focus more on our team from now on, so speaking of the blues, let's talk about Chelsea. But real quick, if you're enjoying the content and want to see more, please consider subscribing to the channel. Cheers. Let's start with the formation. Same as usual, 4-2-3-1 or 4-3-3. I don't think the team will change much from the Spurs fixture, as I think it's pretty obvious by now that Poch has settled on his core starting lineup, at least until Nkunku and Lavia return from injury, that is. So, first up in goal, I'm going to be putting in Robert Sanchez. Like usual, there's not much to add here, he's our number one, and we'll start. He made a few vital saves against Spurs on Monday, so let's hope he can continue that good form in this one. For the back four, I'm going to rotate some things around. However, with him refraining from joining the England setup in order to work on his fitness, you know that our captain, Rhys James, is starting at right back for the foreseeable future. The centre back partnership is an interesting one for me. We've seen Poch rotate centre backs when he's worried about the aerial threat of teams, so I am going to put the French partnership of Axel de Sassy on the right and Benoit Badia Shield on the left. I think Thiago Silva is great, but I fear that he could struggle with the pace, power, and aerial ability of Haaland in truth, and thus I'll be resting him for this one. At left back, and this might also surprise you, I'm going to be putting Mark Kukurea back into the team. I don't think Levi Colwell had the greatest of games at left back last time out, and he was swiftly substituted for the Spaniard for the second half. Kukurea offered us much more going forward in that game, so I reckon we'll see him return for a start. Moving into the midfield, this will be the easiest part of the team to pick. Despite his injury in the Spurs game, Enzo was pictured in training on Thursday, so I don't think it will keep him out of the starting 11. Next to him will be his South American compadre, Moises Caicedo, and in front of him will be, as ever, Connor Gallagher. The three up top will stay the same in my opinion. Ex-City man Cole Palmer is genuinely the first name on the team sheet every week at this point, so he's going straight into that right wing spot to try and prove that City made a mistake in letting us have him. On the opposite side remains another former citizen, Raheem Sterling, who will be no doubt fired up in this one, not just because he's playing his former team, but due to him being snubbed for the England side yet again, for some reason. Up top, it's going to be hat-trick hero Nicholas Jackson. I think he gained some much-needed confidence from the Spurs game, so let's hope he can bring that same energy into this one and bag us a goal or two. Now, I'm going to break down how I think we should play in order to get a result against City, but before I do so, it's time for the question of the day. As always, I'm going to highlight some of the comments from the last video, so here are a few responses to the last question of the day. Thanks, guys, for your continued support as ever. If you want your comment to be featured in the next video, leave your answer to this video's question of the day down below with QOTD at the start as always. So, for this week's question of the day, we'll go for this. Who is your favourite non-Chelsea Premier League player? And why? Alright, so how will we play? Well, I didn't think we stood much of a chance against Spurs, and we obviously beat them, but City are a totally different beast. If we are going to win against them, we will have to be perfect for the entire 90, in my opinion. I'm going to point out what I believe are our keys to success here. Firstly, we have to be defensively solid. We can't give City free chances, we have to make them earn their opportunity. They are so, so clinical, especially with Haaland up top, and we can't allow them to create enough chances to put the game beyond us, especially early on. They have pinpoint crosses off the ball, so we must be wary of balls to the back post. We have switched off in these areas in recent times, and we must not do that in this game because one lapse of concentration and Haaland is bagging from that area like he so often does. Like I said against Spurs, our press needs to be intelligent. City are the best team in the league at playing out from the back, and if we press nonchalantly or with single presses at a time, they will easily get out of their half and into attacking areas. That being said, I think Gallagher once again is going to be so important in this game. Rodri and Kovacic are very press resistant, but they still cannot be allowed time on the ball to dictate play. Connor and Caicedo as well in truth are going to have to bring their A games, because this game could be won and lost in the midfield. Likewise, the individual battles out wide are going to be vital too. I mentioned earlier about Doku trying to pass the Reese James test, and I think that battle in particular is going to be a major factor in this game. If Doku can't get the better of James, like most left-wingers can't in truth, then that seriously limits City offensively. He has been so impressive since he arrived in the sky blue shirt, and is able to fashion chances out of nothing. Likewise, I think the battle between Sterling and Walker will be one to watch too. These two know each other very well and have likely faced off hundreds of times in training in the past. Walker is almost impossible to beat in a foot race, but with Raheem's trickery, he could find some success here, just like Mitoma did against him when City played Brighton. 
I highlighted City's left hand side as their weak point, and a lot of our play will naturally go down this side with Cole Palmer being our main creative outlet. Him, James and Connor will all rotate here to try and get the better of Ake and Doku if he decides to track back, and if they can, we might be able to create opportunities for Jackson in the centre. In truth, I think if Sterling was on the right we'd be better off, but doing that would mean Cole would have to play centrally and we'd lose Gallagher, who has been so important for us this season. People really underestimate how good Connor is because he presses so wildly, but listen to this, he has the most assists and the most chances created in our team, as well as having the most tackles, the most interceptions, the most possession won in the final third and most recoveries. He's been bloody brilliant all season and he's a mainstay of this team now. We won't have much of the ball in this one, so once again we'll have to rely on our counter-attacking capabilities. City have shown a slight weakness to long balls in behind, and if Sterling and Jackson can time their runs right, I'm sure that Palmer and Enzo can pick them out and create opportunities for us. We probably won't have many opportunities in this game in truth, so when they do come we'll have to be clinical, unlike we have been so far this season. This game could genuinely turn around our season. A win against the City side that is undoubtedly the best team in the league would do wonders for our confidence and could be the start of an electric run. With Newcastle next up, getting through almost all the big teams we faced recently puts us in a good standing to start pushing up into the European spots. Three points here would see us go up to 7th if United, Brighton and Brentford all lose their games, or more realistically, 9th if Brentford lose or draw. For a score prediction, I'm going to predict a Chelsea win, though admittedly I think a draw is a good result for us. I'll say that Chelsea will beat City by two goals to one. I'm going to say that our goals will come from Sterling and one for Nico Jackson, continuing his goal scoring form from the Spurs game. As for City, I think it's pretty obvious who will score here, it's going to be Haaland. But that was just my lead in match preview for Chelsea vs Manchester City, thank you ever so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts on these possible lineups in the comment section below, and if you'd be so kind, subscribe to the channel and leave the video a like if you enjoyed. Don't forget to tap the notification bell so you never miss a video from me, or check out some of the other videos on the channel on screen right now. I've been Mono from Mono CFC, and remember, in the rain, or in the dry, keep that blue flag flying high. Come on you blues.